let's talk about one of the most dumped stats in D&D. Well, Ted, we've already done intelligence, so you must be talking about charisma. I am indeed. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome to Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds. Now let's see if this video appeals to you. So first off, I guess we got to talk about charisma and what the charisma stat is in D&D. Well, charisma is one of those things that I think a lot of people misunderstand. Uh, you know, it... it it stems into your likability and your personal presence and power where I feel like, you know, a lot of people think that it's just about, you know, how good looking you are. Wisdom is like, like how strong you are internally. And then charisma is kind of what like you exude externally. So like, I feel like those are kind of like the same coin, but opposite sides. Sure. And, uh, and like you said, a lot of people like confuse charisma with like appearance and how people look. Even like in earlier editions, we would use a comeliness stat, which would like, that was that literally just how good you look, how pretty you are. But also that doesn't really work that great anyway, because that's very subjective. Right. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a bizarre, it's a twist. Uh, but, you know, I, I like the fact that like nowadays you've got the ability to look at well, a character can be attractive and not have a high charisma or vice versa. You can have a lot of presence and just be an okay looking person. So um, let's talk about dump stats because just in general, like in 5e d, &D if you use the standard array, you're getting a dump stat. Indeed. Unless you roll and roll well or, you know, use a point buy and you just, you know, you have everything at a 10 plus. Then you know they're generally you know then you won't have a dump set, but otherwise you've got one. You're gonna put it somewhere. Else. You know, charisma seems to get dumped a lot in Five E because if you're not a charisma caster or a talky character, it's not something that's gonna come up that much for you. Yeah, you know the the fact that you've got you know a negative, you are below average in something. I think most people in the modern world have something that they're below average at. And that's okay. There's no problem. Average is that median line. Not a big deal if you are below that with, with you know, one of these qualifiers, one of these stats. Um, and charisma, there's not a lot of things that affect it. There's not a lot of things that require a charisma saving throw. So if you're the kind of person that is going to be pulled back you aren't going to be the the talker in the group charisma is not really something that's, that's going to come up uh, and when we actually get to the role playing and you do talk unless you actually are required to make a skill roll doesn't really matter and I, we've seen a lot of games where the talk 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 doesn't require rolling so you can say whatever you want and the other person just responds to the words, not to the dice. That's a whole nother can of worms. <laughs> uh, but, you know, speaking of charisma, charisma checks, and persuading people, we must have passed ours when we persuaded this person to sponsor one of our videos, Danny Bell. Uh, he is an author, actually a best-selling author, with the Black Pages novels. It's a great series that follows this character. Uh, starts off with Alana Black, who is a kind of like, I don't know, maybe superhero-ish or she's got modern the, fantasy. She's got the ability to to exist in a fictional world. I've only just started the first book is Empty Threat, uh, but she can basically enter into works of fiction, be it TV shows or novels. It's definitely very interesting, very compelling. Uh, but, you know, there's four books in the series. The, well, sorry, the fourth book is just coming out on August 17th. You'll be able to pre-order it. We'll put a link down in the description. Um, you know, Empty Threat, first book. Warning Call is the second one. Playing Dead is the third one. I'm a little behind. I've only, uh, I've only listened, I listened to them on Audible. I've only listened to two of, two of the uh, three so far. Just downloaded the third one. I'm excited. Also, Danny Bell uses a great cast of voice actors to to uh, voice the characters in, in his book. So if you prefer listening to over reading, uh, you're in for a special treat. Mark Mir is one of them, and there's a bunch of others as well. So I'm, I'm excited to start listening to this. Uh, like I said, we'll put the links down in the description below. With that, let's jump back into the dump stat for charisma and what it means. So as we kind of previously mentioned, you know, charisma had 
a different vantage point in earlier editions. Uh, you know, going way back, there was a whole skills and powers that allowed you to separate stats, and there they actually, as Dave previously mentioned, a Comlinus score, you know, versus, you know, your presence. Uh, but the charisma itself was, for the longest time, viewed as solely at our tables just how good-looking your characters were. And I know that I played a lot of martial type characters and charisma was entirely useless because we didn't make persuasion roles or whatever the earlier edition facsimiles were. And I can recall making characters that had like a six, seven or an eight charisma. And I was somehow the leader of the party. I did so much of the talking and that's just, it would not happen in today's games because. <laughs> well, you could be, but no one's going to listen to you or at least the people you encounter, they're going to dismiss you because you're not very likable. And, and that's it. Like to me, you know, in previous editions, like first edition, they introduced the comely stores like an optional comely uh, score is an optional rule. Second edition, they kind of split it up to your presence and your and your comeliness, your looks, and like there wasn't really skill checks per se, so it didn't come up, it didn't factor in anything. It wasn't a caster stat at the time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it really didn't mean anything. Third edition introduced a lot more skills into the game, so then it meant something for skills, but I still don't think it was a caster stat. So it didn't matter as much. Like, you know, in earlier editions, you had to have it for certain classes like Paladin, but that was it. You know, fast forward the fifth edition, it's a caster stat. There's different things that rely on it. Uh, skills, it means a bit more. And also, you know, it's it's been better defined throughout the editions. But at the same time, it's not a time, it tends to be a stat that does get dumped often. So I guess I'd ask the question is, why do people feel like this is the go-to stat to dump? Because it doesn't affect large swaths of the game, right? Unless you're a caster, unless you're a paladin, um, or you're the talky character, right? You don't need it for exploration. You don't need it for combat. So then I, I guess, you know, we talked about, you know, why people, you know, could or should dump it. But why do we feel that, that you know, characters or players shouldn't dump charisma? Well, I don't think we've delved quite deep enough into why they should. Like, it says something about you when you dump the charisma, and you need to factor that into your character. Like, why why, you know, why did you dump it? Why is it that people, uh, you know, don't feel like they, 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 they're drawn to you? To me, like, I describe charisma as the it factor, right? And the it factor is, like, when you've, if you, you've probably met people like this in your life where you just instantly get a feeling about them. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I feel like most of the time, it's neither, right? Mm -hmm. It's fairly neutral, but some people just have that thing. I don't know if it's pheromones. I don't know what it is, but like you just get a vibe and you're like, mm, sketchy, shady, don't like. Or, oh, like this person seems really cool. I want to spend time around them. I like being around them. And like I can only, like the only thing I can think of, like it's charisma, it's like the it factor. When somebody walks into a room and regardless of what's going on, most of, if not all of everyone in the room acknowledges their presence, you know, that's, that's a charisma factor. You know, if you go to a party and you're having a hard time navigating the crowd and people are ignoring you for the most part, that's the opposite side. That's yeah. the person who has a hard time make, you know, giving off a presence and getting acknowledgement. And, you know, it, it's, you know, whether you look at it's, you know, uh, you know, what your looks are, what your fashion sense is, but just your, your overall, you know, you know, stance, posture, uh, poise, any of that kind of stuff, it's going to make people notice or not notice depending upon where you fall into that scale. Yeah. I think, I really think you should use charisma as part of your appearance, but not in like how attractive you are. Like you said, like your stance, your posture, do you slouch? Do you dress slovenly? Do you not care? Do you not care about your appearance? Cause that's the big difference between someone who doesn't care about their appearance and someone that might not be as physically attractive, right? Again, also very subjective, but someone whose hair is always a mess. Like, you know, maybe they only shave every couple of days. They don't really have a beard, but they don't, they don't, they're not clean shaven either. It's not, it's unkempt. They don't wash their clothes. They don't wash their hands. You know, do they have bad manners? Are they rude? Like all this stuff kind of adds up to a, to a person who has dumped their charisma. 
If you're looking for a way to support the channel, help us continue making videos or articles over on our website, nerdarchy.com, you can always check us out over on Patreon and support us there. As a special thank you, every month you'll receive content for both players and DMs alike for 5e. We do magic items that sometimes we turn into print and play cards. We have drop-in encounters, maps that we use on our own games. We make stuff like, I mentioned magic items, but also spells, feats, races, subclasses, and so much more. There will be a link in the description and one of these cards up here. You click away and get a free sample as well. All right, so you began mentioning some of the things about what a low charisma score would be like. So I think if, if you've decided that this character has a low, low charisma, you're going you're gonna to dump it for this. You know, why not pick, you know, some or all of these things is to kind of showcase what this character has that makes them unappealing or unnoticing, you know, to those around them. And I've kind of broken them down as, into a variety of categories. So first up, is your character annoying? Do people not want to be around them? You know, it could be habits, it could be hygiene. You know, does your character belch in the middle of a conversation and not think anything of it? Are their manners just through the roof and horrible? Uh, you know, these are things that just are a kind of, all right, Mike, I'm just gonna push away from you a little bit here. I really don't want to interact with this. Do they have a shrill, high-pitched voice that just the sound of it makes you want to commit acts of violence? You know, now all of these things are kind of generalities, and as we know that for the most part, uh, everyone's personal preferences are are going to be, you know, different. Everyone, you know, f you know, likes a different thing, but when we have a low charisma, that means generally this person is unpleasant uh, to, to some degree. Are they just bad at social interactions, right? They're they're disconnected. Uh, maybe they don't look at you when they speak to you. They speak into their chest or their beard. They talk to their feet. They're looking elsewhere. They inter they interrupt. They stop abruptly for no reason. You know, they trail off in their thoughts and and, and just you know let it wander. And you're like, what? Where is this conversation going? Why are you talking to me? And you know, those kind of things could be kind of linked to other things. If you're, you know. A low wisdom score, you could totally, you know, just be aloof in your thoughts and not connected to the world. So you've got a low wisdom and a low charisma. So mid sentence, you just kind of wander away. Uh, you know, on on the other side, if you've got a low intelligence, you know, you could link it to you forgot what you were talking about. You know, you have the conversation going, and all of a sudden, you just completely derailed your train. And you just stop and you have no clue what's going on. I've interacted with with people who have had that exact issue. And, you know, it can be challenging to hold a long term conversation with someone who has to kind of get the track back or get the train back on the rails and keep things going. You have to issue prompts and it can be very discouraging. Or maybe worse, like the opposite. They keep talking, but it's clear they have no idea what they're talking about. And, and it's apparent to everybody. They use words wrong. They use the, you know, the, the right words in the wrong circumstances. Uh, they use the wrong you know, uh, tense for a word. Uh, so all of this kind of just adds up and becomes someone that you just don't want to talk to. Maybe they're bombastic or they're super soft-spoken. and uh, So you have no idea even what they're saying. You know, another option is, you know, is the, the, the character arrogant? Uh, you know, someone can be attractive and they've solely latched onto, you know, that that aspect of their personality. And I, they're so good looking that they expect everyone to pay attention to them. They want to be the center of attention all the time. And you've possibly seen, you know, some people that they walk into a room, they want everyone to look at them. And you just, you know, you see half the room go, oh God, not again. Yeah, and they're just abrasive. They're bombastic, like I said earlier. Uh, you know, they, they're just very trying to be around. Like, and again, like you said, they might be super attractive. You're like, oh, I want to be around this person and talk to them. And then they open their mouth and like, oh, then you, you never want to be around them uh, because maybe they're just super self-absorbed. Uh, so all or vapid, all of these things could kind of add up to someone who has a low, low charisma and help you define your character as well. Like these could be fun traits to play into at the game. Um, now, now, hopefully you also build your character with some other redeeming qualities as well. So it's not all bad. Right. The, these are just how to how to add some some concepts, some flavor to 
Well, you've dumped charisma. When you have these, these concepts to build off of, you have some flaws. Obviously, whatever it is you've got as a dump stat should be a dump stat for a reason and build that character out. Okay, you might be really intelligent and low, low charisma, so you go on and on about you know, th this topic that clearly you've missed all the social cues of, you know, the other people talking to you that have no care about what it is that you have to say. Um, but it, it's there. So you redeem yourself with your high stats and you give yourself flaws based on your lows. Absolutely. Let us know how you play low charisma characters in your games and share your tips and tricks with the Nerdarchy community below down in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to do all those things like like, share, subscribe, even go ahead and find that notification bell. Give it a ring so you don't miss a single video. Quick reminder, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we drop new videos on the channel. Come on back. But hey, you can't wait till then. We have a whole playlist up right here about stats and ability scores. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.